Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic, we're going to look at the Kaushi Bunyakovsky Schwarz inequality. So, in this topic, we will find an upper bound for the absolute value of the inner product. We will give and prove the Cauchy Bunyakovsky Schwarz inequality, and we will look at some examples. Now, in this course, we've seen a number of inequalities. Two of them give us an upper bound on an operation. So, for example, if I was to sum two complex numbers, the absolute value of that sum can never exceed the sum of the absolute values of those two complex numbers. Similarly with vectors, the two norm of the sum of those two vectors can never exceed the sum of the two norms. It's always going to be smaller. In fact, if u plus v equals zero, then the two norm of the sum is zero. But it can never be greater than the two norm of u plus the two norm of v. We're now going to introduce a sum that gives us an upper bound on the absolute value of the inner product. We can bound the magnitude of the inner product with this formula. The absolute value of the inner product is guaranteed to be less than or equal to the product of the two norms of the two operands. This is known as the cauchy bunyakovsky schwarz inequality. For example, if we knew that the two norm of u was 3 and the two norm of v was 4, then we are guaranteed that the absolute value of the inner product cannot exceed 12. Now, it can be 0. For if u and v are non-zero vectors, but they are nevertheless orthogonal, then the absolute value of their inner product is zero, and that's definitely less than this product. So let's prove this theorem, the cauchy bunyakovsky schwarz inequality, which says that for all vectors u and v, this inequality holds. Proof. Well, first of all, let's check out the case when u is the zero vector. If u is the zero vector, then the inner product between u and any vector v is zero, and the absolute value of zero is equal to zero. That is equal to the inner, uh, the product of the two norms of u and v for the two norm of the zero vector is zero, and zero multiplied by anything is zero. And thus equality holds, and therefore so does the inequality. Now, let us assume that u is not the zero vector. In this case, v can be written as the projection of v onto u plus the perpendicular component of that projection onto u. Now, the projection and the perpendicular components are perpendicular, and therefore we may apply, once again, the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if all three entries in an equation are non-negative, where a equals b plus c, then a must be greater than or equal to either b or c alone. And as all three of these are non-negative, that two must be true. So therefore, the two norm of v squared must be greater than or equal to the two norm of the projection squared. Thus, substituting in the formula for that projection, we have that the two norm of v squared is greater than or equal to this expression here. Now, wait a second. You'll recall one of the properties of the norm. The two norm of alpha times u is equal to the absolute value of alpha 
times the 2 norm of u. Thus, if we square both sides, the 2 norm of alpha times u all squared must be the absolute value of alpha squared times the 2 norm of u squared. Applying this to the inequality we just have here, we have that the 2 norm of v squared is greater than or equal to the absolute value of that ratio of inner pro uh, products squared times the 2 norm of u all squared. Now, given this inequality and using the property of the absolute values, we know that the absolute value of a ratio is the ratio of the absolute values. Not only that, the absolute value of a positive or non-negative value is that value. So we can do away with the absolute value in the denominator, as the inner product of u and itself is greater than or equal to zero. At this point, we realize that the inner product of u and itself is equal to the 2 norm of u squared. Consequently, the 2 norm of u squared on the right cancels with one of the inner products in the denominator. Thus, substituting the inner product of u and itself with the 2 norm of u all squared, we now have this formula here. Thus, the 2 norm of v squared is greater than or equal to this ratio, and since u was assumed again to be non-zero, which is good, therefore we can multiply both sides by that 2 norm, and so the 2 norm of u squared times the 2 norm of v squared is greater than or equal to the, in, the absolute value of the inner product of u and v all squared. Now, recall that the square root function is monotonic, and so therefore we can take the square root of both sides, and consequently the inequality is thus proved. All right, let's consider these two vectors. u is 3, 4, and v is 12, 5. The inner product of these is 3 times 12 plus 4 times 5, which is 56. Now, the 2 norm of u is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is the square root of 25, or 5. The, the 2 norm of v is the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared, which is 144 plus 25, which is 169. The square root of that is 13. Thus, the inner product is 56 in absolute value, and that is, yes, less than or equal to 65, which is the product of the two, two norms. Now, here's another example u is equal to 2, 1, 2, v is equal to negative 3, 2, negative 6. The inner product of these two vectors is 2 times negative 3, or negative 6, plus 1 times 2, plus 2 times negative 6. So negative 6 plus 2 minus 12, which is negative 16. Now, the 2 norm of u is the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 4, which is the square root of 9, or 3. The 2 norm of v is 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared, which is 36 plus 9 plus 4, which is 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. Notice that, once again, the absolute value of the inner product, which is 16, is less than or equal to the product of the two two norms, which is 21. Now, consider these two vectors. 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 3, 6, negative 9. So the inner product is negative 3 plus negative 12 plus 
negative 27, and this is equal to negative 42. The 2 norm of u is equal to the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 14. The 2 norm of v is 9 plus 36 plus 81, which is the square root of 126. And so we note that the absolute value of the inner product is 42, which is less than or equal to 42, which is the product of the square root of 14 times the square root of 126. And that is the product of the two two norms. As you can see in this example, the inequality is exact. And this is because you'll notice that v is a scalar multiple of the vector u. Now, consider these two vectors here. If we calculate the inner product of these two vectors, we get that it is 0 0.06 plus 1.2 minus 0 0.06 minus 1.2, and that is, of course, 0. So these two vectors are orthogonal. However, we can still calculate the 2 norm of u, which is the square root of 1.79, the 2 norm of v is the square root of 7.16. And very clearly, the absolute value of the inner product, which is 0, is less than 3.58, which is the product of these two square roots, which is the product of the two 2 norms. Following this topic, you now know the cauchy bunyakovsky schwarz inequality which bounds the absolute value of the inner product to be no, being no greater than the product of the two norms of the two arguments. We have seen the proof and stepped through it carefully, and we have looked at a number of examples. Here's the references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!